Welcome back to SF Live. I'm your host, Myrna Lin. Tonight, as promised, we have a very, very special guest. She's quite a catch to have in a show like this. As a matter of fact, we've had a few stops and goes in having her in this show. Her aide told me, well, she will only appear in, sh in your show if she can say whatever she wants. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we won't have anything less than that from our guest tonight, Miss Angela Alioto. Her history is so long and her list of accomplishments warrant writing a book. But let me just give you a little bit of highlights about Angela. First of all, she served for eight years as a member of the Board of Supervisors. Some of those years, she actually served as president of the Board of Supervisors. She's a well-known civil rights attorney and had won the largest race case in the, in the history of the United States, $135 million nonetheless against IBC Wonder Bread. She won employment law cases against Mary Kay Cosmetics, for those of us who use Mary Kay. <laughs> and she had run for mayor in the city of San Francisco twice. I wish she had won one of those <laughs> races. We would, we would probably have a better San Francisco. She ran in 1991 and then again in 2003. Well, how about that? We're right in the midst of a mayor's election. Say what you will, but we will have a new mayor in a couple of days. She is a member of a well-known political family in San Francisco. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I've told her, but my dad used to campaign for her dad. <laughs> and I have the pictures in our album, as a matter of fact. And ladies and gentlemen, last but not the least, she built a church, the Knights of St. Francis. So what else? <laughs> so much. Anyway, Angela, welcome to yeah, our show. Thank you. And thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. I really am excited to be here. Exactly. I mean, it's it's quite an excitement to have you in the show. Okay, let's talk. Let can we talk? Okay. okay. We have the mayor's uh -oh. election. <laughs> What's coming? No, it's up to you. Yes. We have a mayor's election. Right. Tomorrow. Right. Okay. You're one of the most respected public officials mm -hmm. in the city of San Francisco. Your niece is running right. for mayor, Michaela, right. and, and, and you know all the players and you know what happened. As a matter of fact, I remember seeing you at the Democratic Party uh, conve convention right. when they were talking about the interim mayor and your name had come up. Right. You, you were nominated to be the interim mayor. Right. So then here, lo and behold, we have this interim mayor who decided he did not want to be interim. So what is your take? Tell us, what do you think is going on in San Francisco today? Well, first of all, from my standpoint, obviously, uh, it's the best interest of the city of San Francisco that mm -hmm. I care about, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's um, actually very interesting that so many good candidates are running right. at the same time. I mean, right. I, there are 16 or 17 candidates in this race. Exactly. Um, I, I do think that uh, um, it was a surprise when right. Ed said that he was going to run because right. he had said he wasn't going to run. But, you know, again, it's, it's what's best for the city. Right. So if he's doing a good job as mayor, right. then that may be what's best for the city. Right. Uh, my, my niece, Michaela Aliotta, would be an excellent mayor right. uh, for San Francisco. Um, uh, it's just um, a lot more difficult when you're running against an incumbent. When somebody's right. already in the office right. and they've already uh, able to have, you know, commissioners and, and city government generally working for them, it's right. just easier for the incumbent. So we'll see what happens, but we're very, very fortunate that so many good candidates right. are running for mayor of San Francisco. Right, right. Well, um, let's talk about your service as president of the Board of Supervisors. Right. And then I remember, I believe, during your tenure, who was in there? Was it Amos Brown? 
Uh, no, actually, Mabel uh, Tang was that the same that, period? Uh, Mabel Tang, Terrence Hallinan, right. um, Tom Amiano. Oh, Tom Amiano, uh, yes. Uh, I mean, it was. Uh, door, well, you know, I went for eight years, right, so right. it was a different board of supervisors in the beginning. It was right. Doris Ward, Bobby Kennedy, right, right. Um, uh, and that group, um, and then it changed in ninety. Right. 93-94 election um, and became a whole new group. Uh, right. Carol Migdon came in. It was the Lavender Suite, Roberta Actenberg. Right. And so um, it was two different boards of supervisors that I served on. Um, right. But it was 95 um, and 96 that I served as the board president after right. winning the election in 94. Wait a minute. Right. I, I have that a year off. Uh, won that election in November of 93, served as board president in 94 and 95. Right. Uh, which was absolutely... A fantastic time right. for me. Um, right. I think that we did some amazing um, right. programs yeah. that made a difference, whether it was homelessness or my smoking ban. Right. Our, our smoking ban was the first, first smoking ban in the world. Oh, wow. And now people have uh, smoking bans all over the world in different countries. Right. And it was ours here in San Francisco that was the first in 1994. I lost it the first time in 93. <laughs> I went back and I won it in 94. Right. And so there, there's a lot of legislation that went on in those years that I'm very, very proud of, very now, proud of. When, when you look at uh, San Francisco, from the time you're a public official as a board of supervisors member and then where we're at today, how, what kind of changes do you see uh, in terms of you know, major milestones that have or have not happened? Well, you know, um, I, I think that the Internet has a lot to do with the difference in right. what we feel about politics. Right. I really do. Yeah. For example, right now uh, in this mayor's race, it's so interesting to me how right. kind of spread apart it is because we don't have two newspapers, one in the morning and one in the right. afternoon. Right. Now we have the whole Internet. We have, a, you know, we're getting information from everywhere. Some people aren't even reading the papers anymore. Yeah, I don't. So <laughs> you can't put your finger on what's exactly. happening. Right. Um, it's really kind of fascinating. Um, right. It'll be interesting to see if the results in the election tomorrow bear out the fact that um, uh, news is no longer focused, it's widespread exactly. through the Internet. So that, that's very different. I also think that in my day, um, right. all of us were very well known. All yeah. of the board members were very well known. Right. I, you know, as my father would say, a couple of us were serious San Francisco characters. <laughs> and as San Francisco <laughs> characters, everybody on the street knew us. Right, right, um, right. Today, I don't think very many people know who the Board of Supervisors well, it uh, over so are. Fast, so well, fast with that, right? that's with term limits, right, too. Right, that right. term limits occurred my last year. Right. I was term limited out because I had done two terms. Right. Um, but uh, And it had just been enacted that year. Right. But it's true with the changing of the seats. It's true. But... but um, you don't have the Terrence Hallinans and the Billy right, Maher and the, yeah. the the really intense budget discussions right. um, that we had in those days. You just don't really see that anymore on a personal, individual, oh, I know that supervisor level. Right. It's kind of interesting. Well, it's kind of weird because um, now it's like, okay, there's the uh, class of 2,000 supervisors. Right. Okay. Now, how many of those people are still sort of in play right now. It's hard to say. I mean, well, the okay. class of 2000 would be out of play in 2008 after right. two terms. Right, but then in terms of the, from the minds of the people, is there anybody from, from that class of 2000 who stick out as somebody who has, who people can say, oh yeah, I remember him as a supervisor. Well, I think people remember Tom Amiano. Oh yeah, because that's because he is. Still in assembly. Right, he is. Yeah, a, yeah right. I think people remember Tom Amiano. Um, uh, it's, uh, again, it's a whole different uh, arena right. now. People yeah. don't know. The public doesn't know the right. board of supervisors as well right. as it did when I was in office. Right. When I was in the office, everybody knew us and everybody knew what we were doing and everybody yelled at us or hugged <laughs> us. I mean, everybody had an opinion about public power, including, right. you know, you, you park your car and the guy would give you an opinion about public power right. in San Francisco. It was very, very political days. Could be the district elections, too, that people win in a very small area. Well, as opposed to you guys when you were... A citywide. I yeah. could never be a district uh, supervisor. I could never represent one district right. against another district of my city. Exactly. I couldn't do that because I know that I would do very well for my district. Right. To the detriment of another district of my city exactly. so I could never do that I could only run citywide uh, I, th I think uh, district elections have not necessarily served us well exactly I think so I think I promoted one where it was six citywide and four or five right. by district 
right. which is something that they have they were doing in Boston in the right. early uh, late 1990s. So I thought that would have been a good idea, but I don't think district elections is uh, is a good idea, right. quite frankly, not for. And you know, when I was on the board, we had eight women, oh, yeah. and all of a sudden, yeah. district elections come in, and we had one or two. Exactly. It was very, very interesting the difference it made in um, uh, the minority um, equation. Very interesting. Well, you know what? Uh, I, what fascinates me about you is like you're so outspoken. I remember when you were running against um, Gavin Newsom and Matt Gonzalez. Right, Matt Gonzalez. <laughs> There's a guy. And, and 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 they were criticizing you for your hair. Right. You know, and then you says, "Look." How come nobody's talking about Matt Gonzalez with his matty hair <laughs> and, and, and Gavin Newsom with, with his overgelled hair and you're looking at my hair? It, I mean, no, was, it, was, it was constant. The attack, exactly. um, when it came to um, personal issues, uh, exactly. uh, specifically because uh, I was the woman in the race, was the, it, it was absolutely ridiculous. Don't you think there's a lot of misogynism against women? Who are well, running for you know, I think it's very it's interesting. It's always that they're talking about. I mean, well, San Francisco's only had one woman mayor. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and finance. I, th I think right. that's very interesting. We've had many brilliant women in office. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, a lot harder. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your, um, I mean, when you got termed out, then you dove right back into what, what you... I opened moved. a little law office. Yeah, and then you, you right. suddenly, you're making history with all these major cases. It's true. I'm, you know, I don't want to sound uh, too religious <laughs> on you, Myrna, but God is very, very good to me. You know, I have four incredible children. Right. I have five grandchildren now. Oh, you don't look like and, it. Don't, don't um, don't, I do. Don't, I have don't five grandchildren, it. and I love every second of it. And um, uh, I have some of the most amazing verdicts uh, you can imagine. Exactly. The Wonder Bread verdict uh, was just the beginning of some absolutely ama amazing verdicts. How did $35 million. Now, how long did it take you to, 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 to work on that case? Uh, two years. My father just missed that case by a year. He oh just died God. the year before. He would have, that would have been just, well, I know he knows about it, but uh, it would have been so much fun because he always said to me, winning a verdict from a jury of your peers exactly. is the most important thing you can, it's better than winning the governor's race. And he's absolutely right. right. So um, that, uh, that, that case took about two years. Wow, that, um, but that's pretty short then for a major. Well, my clients are generally, they've either been terminated right. um, and they're in really bad shape or they are still working there and being treated like basically like dirt. Right, okay? right. So um, I like to get in, get a trial date and go to trial. I do not mess around. Wow. Um, you know, most of the employment cases are mediated. I'd say 90% of them are mediated. Right. Uh, but uh, um, if they don't mediate within the first six months, I, I, I don't mediate after that because um, there's a reason why it's important for this case to go into a courtroom. Next week, two weeks from now, on November 28th, I'm going into the courtroom. I represent a young Muslim man, 28 mm -hmm. years old. He's black. And he's Muslim, and he's born, um, he came to San Jose when he was two years old, okay? They called him the worst things you could imagine. Muslims kill people. Muslims are, are I mean, terrorists. You're an Al-Qaeda every day at the workplace. Right. To the point where he literally, I mean, he's a very religious man. He would pray at 3 o'clock, and they would criticize him. To the point where he literally couldn't take it anymore, even though giving up a job at this time in this ec economy right. would be absolutely disastrous right. um, and so that's going into the courtroom in two weeks from now and I think that case will make a major statement about religious discrimination um, and oh, treating wow, people right. differently because they're Muslim because they're Jewish because they're Catholic because yeah, right, of whatever right, religion right. they happen to be right. um, now that is going to trial why would a case like that get this far right. see I believe intuitively there's a reason in other right. words I think that this needs to be said I think a verdict needs to be had to that will stop. A, that will set a major precedent, right? Has there been? A oh case yes, in like this that? in this area, it will. And you know me. Oh, you. <laughs> you know me. If it can make a difference in that workplace where people are treated equally, I'm going to do it. Absolutely. Trailblazer. Absolutely. This is the first uh, religious discrimination one that oh, wow. um, I've ever taken to trial. 
I've oh, done a lot of disability discrimination. Mary Kay, right. that was a $14 million verdict. That was discrimination um, based on um, breast cancer. Right. Um, and Madera Quality Nut was a whistleblowing case. That was $25 million oh, really? in Madera down near Fresno. And then I've had a lot of Fresno cases. And last year I spent half of the year in Houston, Texas. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So um, my little law firm is a jewel, and it's, uh, it's a very exciting law to practice. Well, exactly. Well, talk about the whistleblower, case, uh, whistleblower cases, retaliation cases. Right. Uh, that's a tough field. That's a tough area to prove, right? Well, um, you know, I am a big believer uh, mm -hmm. that when you're telling the truth, nothing's tough. Right. Um, and I tell my clients in my retainer, I right. say, if you lie to me, I quit. Yeah, right. Because I am relying on you 100% right. that what you're telling me is true. Right. And what I tell a jury is going to be true. Right. And if I ever get caught in a situation where you lied to me that resulted in me lying to a jury, I quit. Right, right. So there's a premise with my clients, and because I do group cases, wow, uh, I'm okay. one of the few people that does group cases. Really? The, oh yeah, the one in uh, the one in Houston, Texas was 14 clients. Uh, we have a new one in Houston that's six clients. It's generally you know, Wonder Bread was 23 clients uh, mm -hmm. in trial. I represented 20 of them. Um, so I, it's, it's a niche that isn't covered, which right. is groups right. that have the same thing happening to them at the workplace. Yeah, but that's like a semi-class action, but not really. It's a group. It's harder because right. I have to prove the facts of every single one of my plaintiffs. So in Wonder Bread, I had 20 plaintiffs wow. that worked for Wonder Bread IBC over, 20, over 242 years. Right. Years. Right. 242 years. So if you have a client like Willie Wilkerson who's been there 40 years, right. you have to tell his story from the beginning. Right. So it's a, it is a lot of work, which is why very few people do the kind of law I do. Right. Oh, and also don't you have to like spend the money because there are contingencies? Well, yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my clients are generally um, uh, either not making any money or making very little money. Right. And, right. Um, um, I'm a contingency lawyer. I have to win to be paid. Right, exactly. Right. Now let's talk about um, your chapel. Uh, okay. You know, speaking of my chapel. <laughs> you built the chapel. I built a little chapel with the Archdiocese, Archbishop Niederauer, right. and um, Cardinal. And uh, it opened three years ago. Uh -huh. It's on the corner of Vallejo and Columbus. Right. And it is an identical replica of St. Francis of Assisi, our patron saint, right? Right, right. The, the city of San Francisco. Right. Um, it's an identical replica of the little chapel that he built. Right. So it, it totally represents uh, love and peace. And right. in this time of people not having a job and people being homeless or people not being able to pay their rent or pay their medical, right, yeah. um, it's become a real refuge. Right. It's wonderful to sit there and watch the people who come in. Right. It's wonderful because all ages, all ages. Right. It's just that it needs to be better known. Um, the right. press rarely writes about it. And it's a little jewel. So people should go to www Knights of St. Francis, <laughs> right. check it out, and um, come by and visit down the corner of Vallejo and Columbus. Awesome. Well, you know, time goes so fast. It's like we were talking about 22 minutes. Now we have like less than two minutes left. When are you going to run for office again? We need we need some strong, powerful women there who can take on the world. I mean, you know, we, this, the country is in shambles. Yeah, but, but I have to tell you, mess. I have to tell you the truth. Uh -huh. I am a big believer that everything happens for a reason. Yeah, right. I really am. Um, I believe that I lost those two mayor races for a reason. Right. Um, and uh, uh, coincidentally, this last one where I was nominated, um, <laughs> right. you know, it, I had a little bit of a heart issue in oh, April. Oh, and I if I had won that election, I don't know that I would have noticed it. So oh. I think everything happens for a reason. Right. Um, I would never run for any office that wasn't citywide or statewide. Right, right. Um, and so, I don't know, I'm practicing law and having a lot of fun with it. Right. A lot of fun with my children and grandchildren. Right. But I would never close the door. You never know. Well, exactly. Especially, I mean, you know, these are challenging times. They we are need, tough times. We need solid, good leadership to come forward and to emerge. The scary times. Oh, my God. I've you never know, it's seen like, it what's going to happen next? It's, exactly. Uh, it's very scary time. And it's global. You don't know where's the head of this monster and, you know, and all of that. It's really... But again, we only have like 30 seconds left. We're g you're going to have to come back here okay. again. Okay, thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's it's a pleasure, well, ladies and gentlemen. So that's Angela Liotto, a little snippet <laughs> of her massive life, this incredible woman with this incredible 
history with the city of San Francisco uh, and accomplishments. And she just, she's just a trailblazer for all of us. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. And thanks, Angela. Thank you. And good night. And uh, we'll see you next time.